It's very common to encounter a wide variety of date and time formats when you're working with real world data. Thankfully, Pandas provides us with a comprehensive set of functions for handling date and times, making it easier for us to perform operations like date time parsing, formatting, and arithmetic computations with temporal data. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is import Pandas as PD, and we're gonna be working with this wrangled rewards data CSV file. I've included this file in the video description below, so if you haven't downloaded it already, go ahead and download that and save it to the same directory as your current Python or Jupyter Notebook file. And this data set we were working with in previous videos in this video series. And so we've partially wrangled it and cleaned it up a bit, but we still need to work with the date and time data. So I'm going to import that into a data frame that's rewards DF sample. And anytime you're dealing with date time data in pandas, the first thing you want to do, and this really goes for all data is you want to see what are the data types that pandas has already set for you when you imported this data. So let's go ahead and import the CSV. And we'll take a look here. We got three columns that have date information. We've got birthday, date joined, and last seen. And if you're not familiar with this data set, we've been using it in a couple of videos already. This is a collection of records of users that are enrolled in a rewards program. And so what I want to do here is go ahead and see what data types that Pandas has already set for me here. And anytime that you import data into Pandas, it's going to try to figure out what is the most appropriate data type for the data that you're given here. And by default, it's gonna go with generic object if it's not quite sure. And so for strings or for date times, typically it's gonna pick this generic object. And so if we wanna work with these values as true date times, we need to convert them. And so to convert them, pandas has a built-in method called to date time. And so what we're gonna do here is I'm going to, for each of these three columns, birthday, joined on, and last seen, I'm gonna set them equal to pd.toDateTime and then pass in the column name there. And what they'll do is it'll convert each of these values from the generic object data type to date time and then save it back into that column for us. So if we run this code, we can now see that it's been changed to date time 64 NS. Now, when you convert a column to date time, pandas automatically chooses this date time 64 NS as the data type unless you specify a time resolution that's different from that. And date time 64 is the base data type used for handling date time values in pandas. And it's designed to handle dates in a more efficient and array friendly manner than Python's standard date time module. And it's important to note that Python does have a date time module and we're gonna use that a little bit here in just a bit. So this date time 64 format follows the ISO 8601 standard for date time representation, which basically means that generally your dates are gonna be in the form of year, month, and day for dates, and then year, month, day, hour, minute, second for times. We also have NS, which denotes nanoseconds, which are billionths of a second. Um, and so this high resolution timing allows for great precision in time sampling and time-based operations. And so again, it really depends on your use case if you're gonna have milliseconds or nanoseconds that are relevant. Um, in a lot of cases, probably not. Seconds is generally gonna be specific enough for you, but it's nice that this feature is built into pandas and we can use that. So let's go ahead and take a look at what our data frame looks like now. So we can see if we compare this to the output before, it has taken this format like here, we've got slashes uh, for joined on and birthday as well as last seen and has converted it to this ISO format Which is really I think that in my experience. I've worked with a lot of date and time data in the past Having it in this nice clean year month day format and then year month day hour minute second format uh, With these dashes. This is the most user-friendly format and really makes it a lot easier to deal with this data and so let's go ahead and now that we have these date time values stored as the proper data type, let's use those values to make some calculations. For example, we may be interested in knowing the number of days between when each user joined our rewards program. So we've got this joined on date and last seen, and I might want to actually calculate what is the delta between when they joined and when we last saw them. If you think about this from a business perspective, this metric could be a good indicator of the user's engagement level in our rewards program. So let's create a new metric called number of days active. 
and to calculate the time difference between these two daytime columns, we're simply going to subtract the columns and pandas will automatically perform element wise subtraction for each row if we subtract two columns and it will assign a new time delta object that represents the difference in time between those two date times. Now we can assign this new result to a new column in our data set. So let's just go ahead down here and I'm going to reference my rewards DF sample and I'm going to give it a new column name. That's going to be number of days active. And that is going to be the difference between my last seen column. So I'm just going to copy and paste this real quick. I'm going to change this to the last seen column and then subtract that from again, I'm just going to copy and paste to make short work of it. The joined on date. So like this joined on, and then we can go ahead and visualize the effect of that. And so it's created this new column for me that is numbers of days active. Now, after calculating that metric, we may decide that the time component here of the value, you can see we've got the time component right here. We might say, you know, that's not really useful to our analysis. We really just want to calculate the number of days between when a user joined our rewards program and when we last saw them. So we can drop that time component and keep only the date portion of that date time column using the DT dot date attribute. And this approach will convert the date time series to a date object, but it's effectively going to drop that time information for us. And so what we're going to do here is I'm just going to simply reference those columns. So I'm just going to copy and paste here. So we'll copy last scene. We'll come down here and I'm just going to paste that twice and make this first one joined on. And we're going to set that equal to itself. We're going to copy and paste it. I like to copy and paste as opposed to type a lot of times. So then we're going to reference DT dot date. And what that's going to do for both the joined on and the last scene is it's going to convert that to a, just simply a date object. And what we want to do here is then recalculate the difference between last scene and joined on. So I'm going to go back up here after I make that conversion. I'm just going to copy both of these here and paste them right there. And then we can go ahead and rerun that. And what we'll see here is it's now dropped that time component. And all we have are the number of dates that are active. So that's really what we're looking to achieve in our analysis. So to complete our date time wrangling and work through another example, let's calculate one more value that may be of general interest to us. And that would be the current age of each user in our data set because we have their birthday. And so we're going to want to now calculate their current age. And this process of creating new data set attributes is actually referred to as feature engineering and feature engineering is, as it says here, the process of extracting and creating new features from our raw data. And this is very popular when you're doing data analysis. It's extremely popular when you're doing machine learning as you want to create new features to train your model on that might be useful to predictions. And so to calculate a person's age using their birthday, we can start by simply subtracting their birthday from the current date and the current date and time can actually be retrieved by passing the word today into the date time function. So I'm going to create a new variable that's going to be today's date and I'm going to set it equal to PD dot two date time. And I'm just going to pass in the word today. And so this is a argument value that pandas understands and will actually return today's date. So if we just copy and paste this, we'll see it gives us a timestamp for when I'm actually recording this video right now. And so let's subtract each user's birthday from this today date time to actually calculate an approximate age. And so I'm going to say rewards DF sample. And then I'm going to create a new column. That's going to be user age. And I'm going to set that equal to today's date variable that I just created. And I'm simply going to subtract the birthday column here. And again, because the birth date column is in a date time format, I can perform this subtraction operation because both of these are in the same data types. And then let's we'll go ahead and visualize what that looks like looking at the first three rows. So we'll use the head method here. And we'll see what that looks like. And so we have added here over the end 
this user age. But we have a bit of a problem with this approach because simply subtracting these two date times results in the values being listed in terms of days, hours, minutes, seconds, and nanoseconds. And if you ask someone's age, unless they're a lunatic, they're not gonna give you it in terms of how many days they've been alive down to the exact second. So while these values may be interesting to us, they aren't very useful when we consider that a person's age is typically displayed in terms of years. So to accomplish this in a data frame, we can use a combination of a couple different useful attributes. So we actually have what's called DT year, DT month, and DT day that are pandas series attributes, which will extract the year, month, and day values from values stored in a daytime object. So in addition to features that are built into pandas, Python also has a standard daytime module that provides functionality for manipulating dates and times in both simple and complex ways. It allows you to create, modify, and work with dates and times, including operations like parsing dates from strings, formatting dates for output, and performing different calculations, such as calculating ages. So just like pandas, the standard date time module in Python can extract the year, month, day, hour, minute, and other values from a timestamp. So before we calculate the age and years for all of the users in our data frame, let's work through a quick test example using a birthday from the first user. So the first user in our data set has this birthday here of January 31st, 1992. And for the sake of this example, let's also suppose that today's date is January 15th of 2024. To calculate a person's age in terms of years, we can start by extracting the year values from both of the dates using Python's standard daytime attributes and then calculate the difference. So I know I just went through a very lengthy explanation, but let's go ahead and work through this example and hopefully this will connect the dots for you. So what we're gonna do here is initialize two variables for birth date and today. And these are sample values, right? So I've set the birth date to January 31st, 1992, and today's date I'm arbitrarily setting to January 15th of 2024. And so if I want to get some practice here extracting the year values from those, all I have to do is let's create a new variable that's the birth date underscore year, and I'm gonna set that equal to my birth date variable, and then I'm going to reference the dot year attribute. And I'm gonna do the same thing for today. So I'll just say today, year equals today dot year. And again, that is the year attribute. And then we'll calculate that year difference by creating a variable that's year diff. And we'll set it equal to today year minus the birth date year. And let's go ahead and display that value here. So while the difference between 2024 and 1992 is actually 32, that is a correct calculation, our user, if we look closely here, was actually born on January 31st, 1992. Therefore, if we set the current date, and this is why I did this, if I set the current date to January 15th of 2024, this person would technically still be 31 because their birthday has not occurred in this year. So to get an accurate age calculation, we need to account for whether or not the user has already had their birthday in the current year. So to do this, let's create a simple Boolean expression that compares the current month and day against the user's birth month and day. So what we're gonna do here, again, this is gonna be a Boolean expression, and I'm going to say today.month, comma, today.day, and I'm just going to check to see is this less than the birth date dot month comma birth date dot day. And so yes, I am I'm pulling out two numbers here and so this is going to be a, a set of two values and Python can actually do the comparison between these two to see whether or not this is true or false. So in this expression, Python is simply comparing the numbers 115 against the values of 131. And since 115 is less than 131, the expression returns true. Now this is useful for us because in Python, the numeric values of true and false are actually one and zero respectively. These come from the fact that Python's implementation of Boolean data types is actually a subclass of integers. Therefore, in a numerical context, true behaves as a one, 
false behaves as a zero. So what we can do to accurately calculate a user's age, we can start by first calculating the difference between the current year and the user's birth year like we've already done. And then from there, we can subtract the result of this Boolean expression. And if the current date is past their birthday in the current year, the Boolean expression will return false and the value will remain unchanged. Otherwise, the expression will return true and we can subtract one from the difference in years and get the accurate age. So let's take this logic and put it all together using our sample dates here. So I'm just going to copy and paste some of the things we've already done here. So we've initialized the timestamp variables for birthday and today, and then I'm going to extract the years and then we're going to calculate the difference in years here. And then what we're going to do is look at the age. So basically we're going to say age equals the year diff. And then we're going to subtract this Boolean expression. And again, if the birthday is past today's date, then it's going to equate to false, in which case the year difference will remain unchanged. Alternatively, if their birthday has not happened in the current year, it will equate to true, which will be one and we'll actually subtract one from that year difference. So if we go ahead and run this and print out age, we should see that value has gone down by one, 31, which is actually the user's correct birthday. So now what we can do is we want to take this logic and apply it to our entire rewards data frame. And to do that, let's go ahead and define a function and we're gonna copy this logic in there. So I'm just gonna define a new function here called calculate age and it's going to accept one parameter and that's going to be the birth date value and then what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to copy all of this and we're going to make some changes so we'll paste that in here make sure that we've got our indentations correct and we want to start off here we don't need to declare the birth date variable because we're going to accept that as a parameter so we will need today's date and we're going to want to set that to actually what the real date is so we're going to say pd.2 date time today and then we've extracted the year from birth date and today like we did before we calculate the year difference we apply our boolean logic to subtract a value if it's true otherwise it's going to stay unchanged and then we will return age and so we're going to run that to actually create that function and then what we want to do is actually use the pandas apply method which allows us to apply a function to an axis of a data frame or to a series and so what this does is this enables element wise or row column wise operations. The apply method is highly versatile. It accommodates both predefined functions and custom functions, and it makes it suitable for a wide range of data transformations and analysis tasks. So this apply method can be used for all sorts of data wrangling work that you want to conduct, or basically you say, I want to define a function once and then run that logic across an entire data frame column or row and so to apply this function what we're going to do is we're going to say rewards underscore df sample and we're going to reference that user age column that we created before we're going to set that equal to rewards data frame birthday and then we're going to say dot apply and then we're going to pass in the name of our function which is calculate age and so what this is going to do, it's really cool. What it's going to do is it's actually going to accept the value of birth date as a parameter. It's going to put it into the calculate age function. It's going to process all of this code logic and return the age back to this user age column. So to visualize this change, I'm going to say rewards DF sample. And so we can see here that it now calculates the user age in terms of years accounting for whether or not that person's birthday has happened in the current year or not. Working with date time data can be challenging and is very common when you're working with real world data sets. I recommend that you practice these wrangling techniques and others using data sets that you may have access to. If you're looking for new data sets that you can work with, Kaggle.com, which is not a sponsor of this video, is a great resource that you can use to find free practice data sets. In our next video in this series, we'll learn how to handle duplicate records in pandas. As always, if you've enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos.